Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So glad you're here. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. We're gonna be doing some spooky crafts again today. So here we go. Well, guys, how the heck are you? I hope you had a fabulous week. I'm doing pretty good. Um, first project, you're going to need some fake apples. Um, some of them little tiny treat buckets. And the paint here. I got two different types of paint. Two different colors of red. And then this air drying modeling clay. Which is awesome if you don't have a kiln in your house. <laughs> which most of us don't. But first thing you are going to do if um, you don't have the luxury of finding the red apples, <laughs> which I didn't, um, I went to Hobby Lobby, I bought the apples, uh, they had all of their fruit, their faux fruit on sale for half price, and they only had green. So I went with the green apples and thought, well, I'll just paint them red, and that's what I did. I took the two colors of red that I had and blended them together in a little cup and I went a little bit heavier on the chalk paint in the blend and um, once it's dried I took a little bit of black and just kind of make, like made little striations down the apple and then kind of rubbed it to kind of blend it a little bit and then um, went over it again with that mixture of red just a little reminder too um when you're in your craft and it's in the different stages that you go through in order to get the finished project your masterpiece um, it can sometimes look a little fugly you know but don't distress <laughs> it'll get through that phase into the next phase and the next phase and it'll look better and better and better so don't worry if it looks a little fugly right now it'll look better shortly um, but I got these little buckets from the Dollar Tree and it's a four pack and I used the teeth as a guideline as to where to cut. Um, you see where the teeth start towards the back there? That is where I am using as a cutting gauge. I'm going straight down. This is my interpretation of Snow White's Poison Apple. I wanted to do something different. I didn't want to do the same poison apple that everybody's done so this is what I came up with um I'm, and I'm calling them red dead apples so <laughs> I don't know guys you know my mind works in mysterious ways but I'm basically just placing this up against the apple you kind of start at the top where it starts to curve down my cut was a little wonky so I'm fixing that right here Oh, and by the way, guys, I'm sponsoring my own video. <laughs> I have two Etsy shops. One is called Haunted Heart, and the other one is called A Vision and Vintage. Um, so check those out. Um, link is always in the description of every video, and um, I would appreciate it. Now, this right here is paper towels, and I'm just doing this to kind of make it a little sturdier, reinforce it down at the bottom area where the chin is and then at the top on the forehead and i'm just using a little bit of uh, hot glue these seem to be a little on the thinner side i mean as far as the thickness of the plastic so i i just wanted to kind of reinforce it a little bit um you know some of the ones i've i've run into have been a thicker plastic 
but um, I wanted something a little bit more pliable, something that I could really kind of press down up against that apple. So that's why I went with this and decided to just reinforce the top and the bottom a little bit. Now, I'm just using some more hot glue around, um, you know, the perimeter of the face. And you're just going to stick it on the apple, um, press it down as far down as it'll go up against the apple and hold it in that position until that glue dries. Now that that's dried, you're going to get your glue gun and you're going to go around the outside perimeter of the skull. Don't worry about how your glue looks. Um, just make sure that you not, you know you have good adhesion to the apple. Um, the The cheekbones stick out a little bit on um, you know both sides, of course. But, um, you know, just kind of fill it with that glue. And you're going to have a little bit more to fill it towards the top, too, where the opening of the candy container was. Again, holding it down until it's completely dry. Now I'm breaking out the black paint. And I'm just going over the um, the glue and the face, both. You're going to paint both black. think about this fast forwarding that you do on these videos <laughs> wouldn't it be awesome if we could actually work at that pace I mean look how much stuff you could get done in one day it would be it would be fabulous moving on to red we are going with the chalk red and just paint it right over top of that black once it's dried you know the black is dried you're going over that with the red and again, trust the process. It looks a little fugly right now, <laughs> but I promise it'll look good in the end. Just be patient. Now he's dry, starting to look pretty good. He's looking, well, he's looking better. So we're gonna be moving on to the clay and we're going to be covering up the whole perimeter of the skull where it meets the apple. So you're going to be covering up any of your wonky glue um, that won't be seen. And it's just the whole process of getting it all in there and all the way around the face. Because you want it to look like it's part of the apple um, and that the face is you know kind of coming out of the front there so you want it to be a gradual um a gradual thing you know you're building it up towards i don't know how to explain this properly i don't think but it's kind of like a slope you're going to be higher towards the skull and kind of slope down to the apple and then you're going to smooth it out as best you can you don't want it really thick you want it thinner as it is on the apple portion and thicker towards the portion closer to the skull Now that the clay is dry, um, you're going to take some sandpaper and go around that clay 
sand it and then feel it again with your fingers. Seems like you can't really see all of the imperfections with your eyes, so it's best just to go over it with your fingers to see where you feel like it needs a little bit more sanding. And you want it to kind of, um, you know, blend into the apple. Also, make sure you don't take off too much. Um, you don't want to have to redo it. Now that I'm satisfied um, with my sanding and everything feels smooth to me, I'm going over that with some just straight black paint. Black paint's dry, and we're going over the black with more of that chalk red. Does anybody else out there find crafting relaxing? <laughs> I feel like if I go too long without doing some type of project, whether it be something um, that I sell um, in my shop or something that I keep for myself or just something, it doesn't matter what it is. Um, you know, even if it's cooking and creating something different with cooking, I just, I don't feel, I don't, it, it it's like happiness. <laughs> it's like a zen, a zen moment, you know, you're, you're in your zone and you're just relaxed and you're not worrying about anything or thinking about anything. It's a happy place. After this is dried, then you're just going to take a matte finish acrylic sealer spray and just spray him pretty good. Um, just so he doesn't get any nicks or scratches and he's nice and sealed. And then um, I did actually take a little bit of brown paint to the stem. Well, I think our red dead apple turned out fabulous. Isn't he spooky? He's just awesome. I just love him. Oh, and we have intermission. Take a break before craft number two.
I hope you liked our intermission by uh, The Veiled Mirror. We are now moving on to project number two, My Gruesome Grapes. Don't you just love my, my names for my projects? <laughs> Anyways, more paint um, and some faux fruit. Now, do not get the Dollar Tree skeletons. They look horrible. These I got from Michael's. Spend a few more dollars because they have much more definition. Um, these grapes um, are about, the biggest ones are about thumb size. So keep that in mind because you want the heads of the skeletons to be able to fit inside of the grapes. Now, as you can see, I've done a bunch of them already. Um, so I'm just going to show you one here because it's pretty easy, actually. You just make an X. Well, not an X. I guess... Probably, I would say a cross. Make a cross in your grape. And then um, you're going to kind of squish the grape on itself. I'll show you a little close-up here. And um, you're going to cut those little points off as to make a circular opening in that grape to where the head will fit in. See it right there? You want to cut those two pieces off. And I'm using an X-Acto knife. Again, um, a fabulous present from uh, Miss Scott there. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, Lori Scott. I never buy stuff like that for myself. I buy frivolous things for myself. <laughs> but see how um, there's a nice hole. There is a split towards the bottom, and you want that in order to... You know, make that head go in a little bit easier. Put a little bit of hot glue in there. And then you're going to take your head and kind of go in from where that split is at the bottom and push it in. Now, it may kind of roll in a little bit. Some of them go in perfectly. And, of course, this was the last head I had to put on. So, <laughs> um, you know... I didn't have more to uh, show a better example of one that I didn't have to fight with. But yeah, sometimes this does happen. Sometimes they go in perfectly. Sometimes they don't. So when it does fold in like that, when you push it in, just take something and kind of, uh, you know, get it to come back out. And that split at the bottom, I just, you know go ahead and line it up underneath there at the, uh, you know, underneath the chin area. Now, I don't like that there is a little bit more excess on the sides here, so I cut a little bit of that off. It doesn't always happen that way with every grape, but sometimes it does, and if it's not aesthetically pleasing to you and you don't feel like um, there's enough of that skeleton face showing, then you can always cut the excess off on the sides. It cuts really easy with the X-Acto knife, but please don't cut yourself. <laughs> it's so easy to do, so be very, very careful. Once I'm done with that, I go for that um, chalk purple paint, but I did a mixture of the black and the purple together. And the color seems to work really well with the color of the grapes that I've got. So I'm just taking a paintbrush and just kind of brushing it on that plastic. And once I'm done covering it completely, I'll take a little piece of um, paper towel and then just kind of dab off some of that paint. I want some of the definition of the face to come through and show, um, but I want it to also look like it is part of the grape we are done well i hope you enjoyed my gruesome grapes and my red dead apple and maybe try it at home and see um it's fabulous i love it i'm in love with it <laughs> so now i'm going to make an arrangement and um, put them in my silver fruit bowl <laughs> 